Hello everybody. At the time when our uh, company uh, change of name is going to be completed, starting in January 1st, GHE is going to disappear completely from our uh, logos and the bottles and everywhere. And we will be completely uh, transformed to Terra Aquatica, which we like, we love that name. It's been difficult at the beginning because we pushed GHC for so many years that it was a bit uh, of uh, uh, a bit sad to have to uh, kill a, a brand that uh, we've been working so much to establish on the market. Anyway, we like very much Terra Aquatica and at the, at the time when this uh, change is going to be completed, I think it's a good opportunity to uh, make you visit a little bit of our company and our greenhouses to show you that we are still a small family-like company uh, in the same value that GH had at the beginning and not we are not transformed into a big corporation like our competition would like to make you believe. So follow me and I will show you a few of the most essential parts of our company. Our company is located in the southwest of France, uh, the part called Gascony. This is where originated the famous uh, Three Musketeers from Alexandre Dumas. Uh, here is a very agricultural region. Around here there is a lot of fields uh, and uh, we grow quite a large variety of crops. Uh, here is where we do our uh, plastic pots. You see, we start, we start with big, big pieces of plastic. We go to these beads and then from the beads we go to powder. This technology is called rotomolding. The idea is that the mold is going to rotate inside of the machine and the machine itself is going to uh, move like that. It's, it's called actually a rock and roll machine. Uh, so we put that powder that I showed you into the mold and then we are going to cook it. We do four pieces per machine. So now the molds are starting to roll and uh, the flames are starting. We closing the doors and it's starting to rock and roll. This uh, big machine uh, is used to make our biggest pot. I will show you later which one we, we make in that machine. The idea is that the, the whole structure is going up this way, all the way to the pot, and then it's going down this way. And then it goes up on this side and then down again. This is a relatively long process, but it makes pieces that are so strong that you can give them to your son and your grandson. So now it's the next step. We are going to open the door. This is the top of, a, of an aqua farm. And this part, of course, is the part that we are going to recycle indefinitely, even the burrs. I'm going to show you uh, all the equipment to recycle that plastic. It starts here. Here it's to cut big pieces into smaller pieces. Then it goes to that first grinder and it ends up in that bag. Then from there it goes to that devilish machine that transformed the, this into that powder that I showed you before. It's got, it's got to be grinded to that fine uh, uh, flour. So I'm pretty much proud to be able to uh, use uh, and recycle all that plastic. We, we recycle our own plastic, but we also recycle plastic that we collect here and there. So we never know which color is going to come out, but this is the idea. Yeah, rather than uh, using fresh plastic at the time, which is a bit stupid, this plastic is polyethylene. It's a plastic that is non-toxic. Uh, when it cooks, uh, only gas that can uh, come out is ethylene. We which is not really a toxic gas. It's a gas that you encounter a lot in nature. And it has the particularity that you can recycle it endlessly. On this table, uh, we do all the many holes that we need to do, the different covers. Uh, it's an electronic machine. It just has to be programmed. Here 
is where we manufacture our liquid nutrient, our uh, mineral nutrient. Uh, we put the, the powders in that bin here, and then it's a big, big, big uh, motor there that makes it turn uh, indefinitely, goes into that tank, and voila, it's, uh, it's like a cooking recipe. We add ingredients one after the other one, and we let it turn and cool and, and dissolve for a few hours, and then it goes into that tank, it is ready, then from there, it goes into another tank, waiting to be bottled. Uh, we make, every day we make 4,500 liters of uh, one nutrient, whichever. Today it's, uh, today it's a hard water micro. A little mention about GHE. It's about the last time that you are going to see it because uh, in starting January 22, our uh, identity will completely finish changing and we will not even have a GHE mention on our bottles. These are not the final uh, design. We are going to change that in time. It's a transition between uh, GH and Terra Aquatica. Here, pallets are uh, ready to be delivered uh, practically all around the world. Uh, welcome to our new uh, research and production greenhouse. Come in. So this is our new building where we are going to do research on many, many things. Uh, new product, but a lot more than new product. And this side of the greenhouse is going to be used for uh, commercial production, which means that every time that we uh, find something that we think that could be interesting as a pro commercial production, we are going to test it on this side. Uh, actually, you're coming at the end of one cycle. We've been testing the, the possibility of uh, growing a cornichon. It's difficult when you uh, build a greenhouse like this one to uh, make it uh, profitable. So we are trying to be a bit more creative and we're trying to find other ways for a greenhouse grower to make their operation profitable. Now we just have a few things going. It's just starting in a month. It's going to be full all the way to the other end. This year is an experiment. It's a very special project. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, we participate in two uh, international projects uh, covered by an uh, American company uh, called Carbon Org, Carbon Organization. The, the idea is to create a house that will be sustainable. The house is supposed to feed its, its inhabitants. Uh, the house is going to be full of plants growing everywhere. So uh, we are a lot of people participating into that experiment. And our small part is to grow the trees because uh, in this house there will be no animals. So uh, the people need a source of fat. We are the one in charge of the fat. Olive trees and um, avocado trees. This side is grown on a mineral nutrient and this one is grown on an organic nutrient. We are experimenting with uh, bacteria for uh, uh, keeping uh, the uh, phosphorus in solution. Uh, I don't have the final result yet because, uh, as you see, we have to do a last cut to be able to really make, uh, make a measurement. But from what I can see visually, it's the second time that I grow a variety of, ba of basil. The other one was green and I got even better results with, uh, with organic than with mineral. This is part of the same experiment. Here we have soil as a substrate, we have cocoa perlite as a substrate, and we have pure, pure water. This is the mineral, I believe, and this is the organic. Uh, they haven't been cut at the same time, so the way they look doesn't really mean anything. What is, the meaning is, is going to be uh, uh, how, how much weight we get, weight, fresh weight, root weight, uh, dry weight, uh, ratio, dry, um, uh, dry weight, all that good stuff. And by the time we dry that, we'll have all the answers. But before I put something on the market, 
I want to know it works. When we will be finished, you're going to love it. Uh, you know probably Arnica and Montana from the, from the flowers, but there is also a, a lot of uh, active principles in the roots. One of the good things about our technology is that we have access to the roots. We can harvest the plant without destroying the plant. Uh, we have a partnership with uh, laboratories. We're going to send them the, the, the roots. Uh, we did already a first batch. So we're going to send a second batch. And uh, we will examine if this is commercially viable. If it's uh, valuable, then, then maybe we have something. And maybe this is going to be there next year, and we have, we're going to have half of the greenhouse filled up with uh, Anirea Montana. Maybe not, we don't know yet. In partnership with, uh, with laboratory, uh, this one is a pot Potentia erecta. Same here, uh, the, the, the plant is valued for its roots. So here again, we have a possibility to uh, cut the roots and have a continuous harvest without destroying the plant. Any potential, we go to the other side and we make it big before we can really say to a, to a greenhouse grower, hey man, you can take that plant, grow it in our system, and you're going to make money. All our line of systems, all our systems are going to become solar in a short time. So all this uh, pile of equipment, uh, we just need to put everything together and start uh, the testing with the, with the solar panels and pumps. On our uh, Eben Grow, less than a square meter, you can grow not maybe everything you need to feed the family, but a lot of it, a lot of it. In this one, we have uh, cherry tomatoes, we have peppers, we have eggplants, uh, we have strawberries, garlic, uh, parsley, I guess. And all this works on a small, small solar pump. Uh, the cost of running this equipment is zero. And it works also on our uh, organic nutrient, of course. Since we've started this experiment, between the two bottles we've used uh, one liter of, of nutrient, which is absolutely nothing. It gives delicious fruit. It works even on a rainy day. Even when it's very clouded, it continues working. This is an heliconia. It's coming from the other greenhouse, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful plant. I love heliconia flowers. This one is a bit old, but uh, when they are young, they are so beautiful. And it, this has nothing to do here, but I figure it would be nice to have a few big plants here just for the fun. We have that big tent that we use, especially in winter. Uh, for uh, experiment under lights. Uh, as you know, a big part of our clients are working under lights, so we need to also work a little bit under lights uh, to gain experience and also test uh, our product in the same condition that uh, our clients use them. Welcome into our uh, original greenhouse. Uh, as you're gonna see, it's uh, kind of a mess right now because it's been overgrown with plants. And also since now we are uh, organizing the new one, a lot of things are changing. So we have to redo completely that one uh, to make it look a little bit better. But at least you'll see some interesting plants. Come in. So here in this greenhouse, we, over the year, we have accumulated a lot of plants. This was our uh, research greenhouse also in the good old days. Le look at this one, for example, it's a tubergia. Uh, it's, it's here since 2004. Look at that trunk. It's a very extremely old plant. Uh, kumbaba, kumbaba lime kefir. This, this is the plant that is used in the Thai kitchen. This is a small... Uh, Aquaponic experiment. This is where I developed our uh, organic nutrient for aquaponics. Uh, this is a, a goyava tree. We have different type of goyava. This one is from Indonesia. This is a hibiscus. Brugmansia is a beautiful tree. This is a carnivorous plant. And this one is a pitaya. We have some few peppers of, of different kinds. This is the, one amongst the strongest in the world. I touched it, I should not have done it now. I cannot touch my face anymore. Our cactus, they are, they are overgrown really and they're starting to fall over. They've been growing for many years. They were well, but now they are too old. They're starting to fall all over. The idea is to cut them about at that size and let them regrow. 
So this one is ready, now we have to do all the rest, and it's quite a, quite a job, believe me. These are the roots you get uh, with an organic nutrient, which is exactly halfway between uh, horse roots and hydroponics roots. The fact that when you grow with an organic nutrient, the, the, the structure of the root is completely, completely different. In nature, it's a 30 meter high tree. I cannot have a 30 meter high tree here, so I keep it really in a small pot. It seems to work. This one also, it's a lot of plant in a very little pot, but it works. It works pretty well. They, they, they don't need to develop the, the roots uh, on a very big way. They have everything they need right, right at their hand, if I can say. This shows you that something that few, few people know or use is that you can do a long-term hydro. You, this is 20 years. Feijoa, it's a tree from Brazil with a, a fruit with a very special test. It's pretty good. Again, you see, we, you can grow big trees. This is a part of hydro that is underused, in my opinion, uh, for decoration in a, in a city hall, in a bank hall, in a hotel home. You can grow huge trees in a, in a short time and, uh, and they will last forever and the maintenance is extremely small. Bird of paradise coming at the end of the flowering. Uh, as you know, we are changing identity. Starting 2000, 2022, uh, you will not see any mention of uh, um, general hydroponics anymore. We'll have finished our transition and we will be Terra Aquatica forever. For us, it means that we are still a, a little independent family uh, operated uh, company and we don't belong to a big corporate and we love the idea. The, all, most of that line, uh, for instance, the flora series, really the basic, flora nova, uh, cocoa, dual part, all this is the same, uh, is still the same formula, same formula than the, than the Americans. Uh, and we're gonna keep it, we didn't lose the, the formula, we lost the, the, the labels, a bit stupid, but this is like that. For the rest, already in the past, the organic is our job, we did it here. The, this organic is, was developed by us, not by the Americans. The same with the boosters, most of the boosters are different be, just because of supply and legislation. The original uh, formula from from the GH are still with us, plus the one that we have developed. That's all folks, uh, thank you for uh, listening. I hope you enjoyed the tour and see you in the next video.